Wow, this thing is really powerful. It has a thrust to weight ratio of 1.73, I believe. And we constantly had to make corrections because the thing would just tip over by itself so it was really really difficult uh, keeping this thing in control I had to do multiple takes at actually launching the thing and a steep ascent is definitely the safest and as you can see the rocket is pretty much just flipping out of control so we were really lucky that we had to decouple the boosters right at that second and you can see something kind of smashed into the wings of the shuttle it didn't really seem that anything broke I couldn't really find anything that broke. So I guess it's not 100% reusable, more just 99.9% .9 reusable. So sorry about that. I, I clickbaited you. Um, and actually, the boosters are now landed in the water. So that is very, very nice. And in a second, we will just cut back to the space shuttle. You can see in the distance there another booster landing. Now we are back with the space shuttle and we are just flying up, flying pretty flat so that we can not only raise our apoapsis but also our periapsis. This will make our circularization burn pretty efficient. Now thrust to weight ratio was kind of a concern. As soon as the boosters decoupled it would go back down to uh, 0 0.94. Um, so yeah, that isn't that good. But I did all of these launches so many times that I kind of knew how to counter the low thrust to weight ratio. As soon as we cut off our engines as well, the, the entire thing just flipped out of control. So yeah. This this thing definitely isn't that stable. I'll put the craft uh, in the description, but beware that uh, this thing is pretty much the most unstable thing that you have ever flown apart from the RML. I'm sorry Marvin for roasting your RML so much. Go watch this video, it's really good. So yeah, just doing our final bits of, of burns, going to our apoapsis and just raising our periapsis for the final time here. So doing some quick puffs with the engine and now we can set a maneuver node towards the MUN, which was Again, really difficult to keep in control. I had to make an action group where as soon as I staged away the orange fuel tank, the vector engines would just shut down and we would go completely on the power of the OMS engines because otherwise the entire thing would just spiral out of control. And right now we are also using the OMS engines to keep the shuttle a bit more steady. OMS stands for Orbital Maneuvering System and the, uh, those are the tiny engines that are firing right now. Uh, so the vectors have just been disabled because they are on a massive angle to compensate for the weight of the boosters and the external fuel tank. But those are now staged away so we don't use them anymore. So we are now just using only the Orbital Maneuvering System. Now we are on the massive orange fuel tank and we are transferring all of the fuel from the upper two tanks into the lower tanks uh, so that we have enough fuel for the descent the orbit and landing. And now back on the shuttle itself, on the orbiter, we are making a little correction burn uh, to the MUN. So we will have an apoapsis of about 15 kilometers, which is plenty for the MUN. So we have done that correction burn now. And now we have switched back to the orange fuel tank, which will be deorbiting right here and will be entering Kerbin's atmosphere. And you will see in a second, it might look kind of weird because it's sped up by four times as well, just transferring all of the fuel into the lower fuel tank. You will see that I am going to be spinning. This is to stop the overheating of the air brakes, which still didn't really work all that well, so we had to slow down using the engine as well. But it did definitely help stopping the overheating, even though one of the air brakes still overheated, but it's definitely better than nothing. So right now we are really slowing down and uh, in a second we're going to be deploying the drogue chutes we which we have done right here and these will help slow us down even more. Oh, bit of a light boost. And as you would probably expect, this thing is definitely more suited for water landings instead of ground landings because you'll see right here it does survive but um, it's just really sketchy it, like bounced off the ground and then it tipped over luckily nothing broke as you can see but uh, yeah still still kind of sketchy we i would definitely prefer a water landing that worked it happened and everything was nice and fine what's also really nice and really fine uh is that we are currently warping towards the man because we have set a maneuver node which will circularizes around the MUN, which we'll be executing in just a second. There we go, we have ignited our OMS engines and we are just slowing down and we have now circularized around the MUN. Beautiful! We are now warping towards the daytime, so we have nice light and we can open our cargo bay and as you will see, 
in a second. There we go. Inside is a little probe, which you will probably have noticed me building while actually constructing the thing. So I guess it's not completely reusable, but this is a payload, so it's supposed to be jettisoned. So it's allowed. So I'm just maneuvering the orbiter in a way that it doesn't smack into the probe. This little thing is now in orbit. We can extend the solar panels and the antenna. Really nice folding animation there, I believe. That's from the restock mod. I'm not entirely sure. If that's not, correct me in the comments. Uh, and in a second, Bill Kerman will go on EVA to check on the satellite to see if all of the things function properly. So yeah, just, just checking everything. Yep, it seems to be functioning all right. So yeah, that's really nice. Um, which means that we can now find a nice spot to de-orbit ourselves uh, and to land, which we have done right now. You can see beautiful curb in there in the background, trying to make a screenshot by adjusting FOV, but didn't really work out all that well. Um, yeah, I didn't really like the end result. I wanted Kerbin to be like really big. We are going to be slowing ourselves down relative to the surface here. And we are landing in this little crater, which is going to be a tiny bit difficult when actually like lifting off. But still, it seemed to be a nice landing spot. We were right above it. So I thought, hey, why not go for a, a little crater? Because, you know, usually I don't really go for craters all that much because I like to go just for a flat surface. We have a very bouncy touchdown and after a bit of rolling, you can see me engaging the brakes right here, but after a bit of rolling, we ended up at a pretty nice place. For some reason, Kerbin didn't have clouds and an atmosphere for a second, so I fixed that. And something like that also happened later in the video as well. Um, but yeah, we can now all go on EVA, uh, very, very gently. I de definitely, um, looking after them. I, I really care about the Kerbals, you know, I never want them to, to be hurt or anything. Uh, but yeah, Bob Kerman can now do the honors and plant the flag of Kerbal Space Program. Very nice. I completely forgot to actually like change the mission flag to the Zenith Aerospace Center. So now we have the Kerbal Space Program flag. Isn't that just great? Maneuvering ourselves for a nice screenshot and just waiting until the sun is at a nice position so that we have good lighting and we are just taking the screenshot. Bob Kerman was saluting the flag. Absolutely beautiful. I really, really loved like the timing of him saluting. It was absolutely perfect. So yeah. I think uh, the Zenith Aerospace Center will give him a raise for that. Jebediah had a bit of trouble with actually getting on board. It was definitely Jebediah piloting his EVA pack, not me. Don't look at me. What? Why are you looking at- No, don't look- Okay, I'm sorry. So we are taking off again from the Mon surface and uh, the the surface of the Mon is kind of kind of wavy kind of bouncy so the 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 takeoff was really really sketchy as you can see almost striking our wings into the surface there and we had to go really steep to avoid the the edge of the crater but we made it uh raising our apoapsis to about 10 kilometers which still is a pretty good height uh, for the Mon so we have done that right here and we can now make a maneuver node at Apoapsis to circularize around the Mon again. So, just warping towards Apoapsis and executing the burn right here. So, we are in orbit now, and now we can create a maneuver node which will actually bring us back towards Kerbin. They get to finally go home. We are six days into the mission, and they can now finally start their return journey. Isn't that exciting? So, they are now firing their engines to escape from the Mon's gravity and to get back to the gravity of their home planet. The gravity that they are so used to, even though they are still actually in zero gravity. Okay, just ignore what I said. They are now entering the atmosphere of Kerbin, gonna do two aero breaks. So the first one is just to, to lower the apoapsis to pretty low, I believe it was 300 kilometers, something like that. And then after that, another aero break, which will actually bring them to the Kerbal Space Center to land there. So this was the first aero break, and now they will be warping towards apoapsis to raise their periapsis above 70 kilometers, which means that their periapsis is in space. And then they can create a maneuver node, which will bring them back to the Kerbal Space Center, which was kind of difficult to, to actually get right, because obviously Kerbin is rotating and the approach that we have right now will make us overshot massively. So I figured that out the hard way and 
I had to reload a quick save and that for some reason disabled the clouds. So it's the second time in this video. Like firstly we had the atmosphere and the clouds gone and now we have only the clouds gone. But yeah, I have like billions of visual mods which are probably having some compatibility issues which honestly is kind of to be expected. And what is also kind of to be expected, we can see the Kerbal Space Sense runway, which we'll be landing on in a second. Um, but we were having some 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 difficulties, as you can see. Our space shuttle wasn't really that stable, and it was sliding and falling all over the place. And it was just a... <laughs> I had a really difficult time actually landing. So we are extending our landing gear, and we are approaching the runway. We are now setting the brakes to the fullest of their potential. And we have touchdown. There we go. Beautiful. We can engage the brakes and come to a complete standstill. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have sent a 100% reusable space shuttle to the Mon. We landed there and we returned back to Kerbin. And this was a really difficult video to record. But ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe with post notifications on so you never miss a video. And I hope to see you in the next one.